going to be a neighborhood question. Pretty straightforward. It says, hello, my husband and I would like to purchase a townhouse in Hamilton Heights, neighborhood of Manhattan, that we could pick out, pick up at a discounted price. You know, you know, anyone that says they want a discounted price, unless it's off market, unless you're selling it to someone you know, or giving it to someone that is in your family, rarely are you going to feel a discounted price. That's like, why would I sell, say, my camera or my car or my computer or my cell phone or whatever? Whatever you're selling, why would someone sell it at a discounted price? There's no discounted prices. It's not a bad... Discounted prices only happen in a bad market or when there's no competition in that neighborhood. Nobody wants to actually go to the neighborhood. Nobody actually wants to buy it. Or the house is just so dilapidated or there's liens. There has to be a problem to get it at a discounted price. So that's the first thing. Discounted price. Um... It needs renovations. We have two boutique hotels. Da da da. We have no loans. Uh, who or what would be a good lender that you'd recommend for our scenario and the area? So they're asking about the area, Hamilton Heights. Okay, so this is the easiest way to answer any area, regardless of where it is. If you take Manhattan and then you just go like this with a circle and you just and you just expand it, those are the most expensive areas that will be coming up. In other words, they're up and coming. They are, you know, they, we can't actually talk about schools, crime. You have to look it up. You can't talk about demographics. It's all part of fair housing. So I can't talk about anything like that. But if you look at the home values of an area like Williamsburg 10 years ago, and now you're selling it now, you bought it at a discount. What about Fort Greene or downtown Brooklyn or bed or Hoboken or uh, upper West Side around like 135th Street, which is Harlem, uh, or like 100, 100th Street on the East Side. Now, it's like the reason is because it's just supply and demand is that the price has gone up so much in Midtown, Downtown, even the financial district. And up, like nobody wanted to live in the 90s because it was so inconvenient. But now the 90s, I just had a closing there. It's like any area that's just from the nucleus of the Empire State Building and you just start pushing outwards will be up and coming areas. So if you're talking about Hamilton Heights, yes. If you're if it's a long term hold of ten years or more, it's an amazing investment. Anything's an amazing investment at, at ten years in real estate. I'm not talking about gold or this or stock market or whatever. Stock market maybe. I don't know. But if you're talking about bed uh areas that are along the train line, that's really what it is. First, they go for the convenience to Manhattan. Then they go to what's in the area, you know, bars, restaurants, shopping Things that, nightlife, things that will actually entertain them. So convenience to Subway, to the city, or to work, whatever it is. And then they go with what's in the area, all right? So this is the ironic part is the transportation's already already there. And then this is what happens is that the home values go up, and then the home values go up, and then the commercial starts coming in. In other words, the commercial residential, or the, the commercial real estate starts coming in. So... We obviously have easy transportation, but there's more convenient. If you're way out on the A train or the C train or the four or five going into the Bronx, coming into the city, it's going to be obviously longer. Home values aren't going to be like they are in the city because people want to be in the city. Since we already have the transportation established, the residential needs to, ki- the, needs to catch up. So this is what happens. The residential catches up. The pricing increases. Usually the rent increases first. Then the buying starts increasing, and then the commercial starts coming in because the commercial is not going to establish themselves in an area, usually, they're not usually going to uh, establish themselves in an area that's not going to be already popular the first night they open because they're not going to be, they're not going to survive. Like if a bar opens up where a bar, sh- where there's not a crowd for that bar or that restaurant or that laundromat or that salon or whatever it is, dentist office, dentist office, is, if the residential residents are not there to support that, it's obviously going to go out of business. So residential needs to go up first. So if you go into an area, this is the best way to do it, is if you go into an area and you have commercial all, already established, like maybe high-end brands or you know, maybe boutique shops, then it's already established. You, know, you have to go further out, further away from the city, further into New Jersey, further north, further into Connecticut, further into Queens or Brooklyn. And if the area looks like it's you know, commercially could be brought up a little bit if it's boarded up or there's graffiti, you know, that's an up and coming area. That's that's Williamsburg or Fort Greene or downtown Brooklyn or Hoboken or Jersey City 15 years ago. Nobody really wanted to live there. Like people were like, oh, it's a great area. Da, da, da. Now it's accepted and popular and people, 
it's accepted when someone from that area, say Hoboken, says, I live in Hoboken, you go, awesome. You know why? Because the residents moved in, the renters moved in, then people started buying, the buying prices started going up, then you had the tenants there, you had the owners there, you had people that were established, then you had people that started their nail salon, their hair salon, their uh, whatever their commercial real estate needs were, they moved in, and then sure enough, uh, you have a, a burgeoning area like East Williamsburg, which is on fire, Upper East Side, Upper Upper East Side, going towards Harlem is another burgeoning area. So I hope that helps. Any area that doesn't have the rent prices it should is a up and coming area. If it's already established, you know it's established. People are talking about it. it's already popular, it's accepted, things like that. And accepted, I mean, when people say, oh, you live in Jersey City, people are like, yeah. And they're like, oh, cool. And the reason being is it's easy to get out there. It's cool, it's popular, home prices, things like that. People judge it on the home prices, as bad as it sounds. But anyway, I hope that helps for an investment unit outside of Manhattan, or at least upper Manhattan, like Hamilton Heights. Subscribe to this channel and to our Instagram. Those are our two favorite social media networks. I hope you guys have an awesome, awesome day. Any questions, leave it in the comments below. Talk to you guys soon.